శ్రీ గురు చరిత్ర చాప్టర్ ట్వంటీ త్రీ నామధారక సిద్ధ హోలీ వన్ యు హ్ వివిడ్లీ డిస్క్రైబ్ టు మీ ద గ్రేట్నెస్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ హోలీ ప్లేసెస్ హోలీ ప్లేసెస్ ఇట్ వాజ్ యాజ్ దో ఐ కుడ్ సీ దెమ్ ఆల్ క్లియర్లీ విత్ మై ఓన్ ఐస్ వేర్ ఎవర్ ద లార్డ్ మ్యానిఫెస్ట్ సిమ్సల్ దేర్ అబైట్స్ ఆల్ ద గాడ్స్ అండ్ హోలీ ప్లేసెస్ దేర్ ఫోర్ యాజ్ యూ హ్యావ్ సెట్ దిస్ సంగమా ఇస్ యాజ్ హోలీ యాజ్ ద కాన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ ఆఫ్ గంగా అండ్ ద ఫైవ్ హోలీ రివర్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ ప్లేస్ ఈవెన్ ద బర్డ్స్ అండ్ బీస్ విచ్ టేక్ అ డిప్ ఇన్ ద రివర్ అండ్ డ్రింక్ దిస్ వాటర్ ఆర్ షోర్ టు ఒప్టెయిన్ లిబరేషన్ ఈవెన్ బై లిస్నింగ్ ద లిస్నింగ్ ద హోలీనెస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ప్లేస్ అవర్ హార్ట్స్ ఆర్ ప్యూరిఫైడ్ ఫర్ దోస్ హూ లివ్ ఇన్ దిస్ ప్లేస్ ద ఫైనల్ స్టేట్ the final state of liberation is at their command those who earn for liberation resort to the path of bhakti earlier i too longed for liberation by listening to your accounts devotion and to the lord without any such other motives as banished even the desire for mukti the only thing that pleases me now is singing the glory of my lord sweeter still is drinking the nectar in account of the divine acts of the lord the whole of your being is filled with such account therefore be pleased to recount the same to me who was the muslim king you spoke of how could such a fallen one earn the grace of the lord siddha comments this account namadaraka it is by the grace of the lord that such a noble longing has captured has captured your heart you are indeed blessed okay. i too enjoy immensely the pleasure of recounting the stories of the lord when lord sri pada swami lived in flesh and blood at kuru pura okay. a washerman used to take his darshan bow to him and serve him with all his heart one day the lord pleased with his devotion said fellow one day you will be a king the man was immensely happy to hear the word one day he happened to see the rule, ruler of the land sporting in the waters of the rivers in the company of beautiful maidens and thought great must be the guru of this king else how could he have once come by such royal pomp and luxury he is truly blessed how can i ever dream of such a good fortune at once yeah. lord sri pada yeah. who too came there for his dip knew his innermost thoughts and said to him my dear you are now quite old you will not be able to enjoy such pleasures even if you get them now i assure you that in your next life you will be a king and enjoy such pomp and power do not feel anxious the washerman said lord the blessings you have given agrees with my heart's desire it will be possible only for a youth to enjoy such pleasures in full but pray grant me that i shall be blessed with firm faith in you in spite of my royalty in my next life sri pada blessed him saying may it be so after some time the washerman died and was reborn in a royal muslim family in the city of vaiduria in course of time he became the king yet owing to the forces of subtle tendencies of his former birth he was endowed with a high sense of justice sense of loving equality to all creatures and loving regard for the hindu gods and pious brahmins some of his fanatical ministers were not blessed pleased with the spirit of tolerance they often counseled him saying o oh, mighty king it is is it proper for you to stick to the tenets of your own religion is it it is proper uh your present ways are unworthy of even being conceived of in your mind when all human beings are equally endowed with similar organs flesh and blood how can the hindu institution of caste system for instance be approved of by you how can the supreme lord abide in such inert and material objects like idols and trees like the people which hindus worship <laughs> The king replied it is the dullness of your intellect that makes you think so by creating different individuals with different aptitudes and abilities in thoughts and actions the lord himself has created the various castes the supreme lord is all pervading just as children are taught alphabets and simple words 
and are thus in gradual stages lead to higher levels of understanding it is proper that the simple hearted folk should first learn to practice steadiness of heart and mind in meditation with the help of idols and forms such steadiness in meditation leads to higher states of understanding and wisdom then they will be able to comprehend the supreme all pervading formless god even a mirror when it is covered with dust cannot reflect the object properly when the dust is wiped off a clear image is obtained so too as long as the mind is impure it cannot grasp a clear com- com- conception of the lord but when it is purified through such devotional practices as meditation it can understand the glory of the formless it is therefore proper that i respect pious brahmins too who are the knowers of the perennial wisdom of the vedas which is its own authority for their practice accords with their understanding you too will do well to imbibe my attitude to them such brahmins are deemed divine even by the gods indeed all those who live in accordance with the holy laws enunciated by the vedas and the smritis are worthy of reverence therefore you should outgrow your fanatical and communal prejudices the counselors were not pleased with this logic but they could do nothing else than keeping their own counsel after some time the king was laid up with severe boils on his thigh several physicians had failed in their effort to cure him and the king could not bear the suffering he could not even take food one day he sent for a pious brahmin and humbly requested him to suggest a way of getting rid of the disease the brahmin said sir you are a muslim king and i am an orthodox brahmin if you do not if you do what i say your people will not spare you so i shall offer my suggestions only in strict privacy the king agreed and accompanied the brahmin to a far away place a tirtha hallowed place there the brahmin said to him disease is always a consequence of the sins of our former former lives it can be cured by giving away religious gifts dana or by administering administering medicines or by worship of deities but the most efficacious means is to take darshan of great mahatmas which indeed cleans us of all our sins i shall recount a story to illustrate my point once upon a time there lived a fallen brahmin in the city of ujjain he left off the principle of right conduct enjoyed by the shastras to the winds and lived the life of a libertine besides he was infatuated with a courtesan named pingala however by virtue of the religious merits of a former life sage rishabha once came to their house the brahmin and his concubine received him with due reverence and worshiped him they partook of the washing of the feet fed him sumptuously and put him to sleep on cozy cushions as he slept peacefully they stood by in attendance with folded hands ready to answer his answer his calls the next morning the sage woke up and went away by virtue of such a meritorious act both of the brahmins and his women were born in their next life in a pious kshatriya warrior caste family the brahmin was born as the son of king vajrabhanu of the land of dasharna one of the other wives of the king was jealous of her good fortune and poisoned the royal queen when she was pregnant however by the grace of the god the queen did not die but gave birth to a handsome son the bad effects of the poison however showed itself by causing ugly bleeds and boils to appear on the bodies of the mother and the child no physician could cure them as they could not take any food they were emancipated and very ill the king was persuaded by his other wives to desert them in a wild forest henceforth he lived happily with his second wife the unfortunate queen suffered much on account of the boils of the body dangers from the wild beasts in the forest and stones and thorns all along the path often she prayed to god in this manner O oh Lord I cannot bear the suffering any longer it would be better for us to be devoted devoured by a lion or a tiger if only such an event seems to be capable of relieving us from this plight in the course of her wandering one day she saw a herd of cows approaching the herdsmen and she cried out to them that she was 
about to die of thirst they showed her the way to the nearest lake she went there quenched her thirst and rested herself for a while meanwhile a group of women came there to take home drinking water in pitchers she then addressed them and inquired who the blessed king of the land was that they should all look so happy and contented they told her that their king was a wealthy merchant cast and his name was padmakara even as they were t- telling her of the noble disposition of the king royal attendants came there the unfortunate queen followed the guards to the royal palace and poured her tale of woes to the king padmakara the king was moved by her account and accorded her his protection in course of time the condition of her son deter- deteriorated and he succumbed to the boils the unfortunate mother lamented oh my son you have deserted me in this ocean of misery do you not care for all the hardships i had to face for your sake i was separated from my husband and parents only on account of you i loved you as my very life i cannot live without you by a strange coincidence sage rishabha came there heard her lamentation and said mother why do you wail in vain this world is illusory and transient the mere the merely material mortal body does not deserve to be invested with the illusory fondness and feeling as for a son just as the worm dwells in its improvised nest of thorns and acts in it in its proper manner as long as life exists in it the soul inhabits the body which is built in accordance with one's previous actions and undergoes the various karmic effects the soul which seems to have sprung from the workings of karma the modes of nature guna gunas and time is indeed an aspect of the all pervading consciousness indeed he is originally beyond all relationships and differences of sex the ph- sex phenomenal body which has both births and deaths is is based on ignorance still as this nascence is beginning less the jiva of or the individual soul is said to be endowed with bodies from time without beginning knowing this you should keep up your mental poise and face your prarabdha with courage devote the rest of your life to the service of the lord the unfortunate mother replied lord the wisdom which you have so so compassionately expounded to me cannot take root in the heart of me who uh, who is in the grip of ignorance may you do to do to me that which would console my heart when i am in such dire distress you have come to me as the more embodiment of the lord's grace compassionate sage knew by his yogic power that her dead son was his devotee in his previous life and sprinkled a little sacred ash on the corpus at once the boy came to life and sat up like one who woke up from deep slumber the sage by his mystor- mysterious power blessed the boy boy with a sword a divine armor and strength of 12000 elephants and told the mother your son is blessed with long life raw and royal authority he will be invincible and the sage went away in course of time the blessings of the sage fully bore fruit thus the power of holy sages cannot be adequately described therefore seek the protection of such a one said the learned brahmin the muslim ruler was pleased he said you have well de- delineated the divine competence of sage saints but where can we now find such a one be pleased to tell me if you happen to know of such a one do not hesitate to do so far for fear that i am an alien being a muslim the brahmin said i heard that there is at the celebrated conference of bima namaraja rivers the greatest of renounced sages a sanyasi who is omnipotent omnipotent as the lord himself seek his protection and you will realize your object the ruler at once returned to his capital and set out with all his royal retinue to pay homage to the sage he first arrived at gangapur and quite all the people there where is this holy sage of this place please direct me to him the innocent flow folks were scared at the sight of the ruler and of an alien faith and would not speak the ruler assured them sirs i have come only to pay homage to the holy one please do not entertain any suspicion regarding my intent please tell me where i can find him only then did they tell him that the guru was at the sangama the prince alighted from his royal palanquin and humbly proceeded to the hallowed spot on foot on seeing him the guru addressed him with loving familiarity oh my dear 
washerman why didn't you see me fra- for so long at once the memory of his previous life was awakened in the prince and all his former devotion was stirred in his heart with a quivering voice he recalled lord you were the holy one sri pada and i was the washerman and your humble slave now i am prince only through the power of your former blessings thou of omnipotent one uh, pardon my delay he said i must in the royal pleasures and pomp with which you have blessed me i lost sight of thee the bestower of it all have mercy on me your humble servant and a fallen one this my stubborn illness has proved instrumental in securing for me this blessed meeting this blessed meeting with with thy holy self thereby was my for- forgetfulness dispelled and the former facts vividly recalled the loving master smiled and demanded show me thy deceased parts the pr- prince looked up and finding no such in any part of his body was amazed he burst out in a flood of praise lord the, this illness i feel was but thy servant it has it has dragged me an unrighteous one and a sin- sinner to my to thy blessed presence having up- accomplished its allotted task it it vanished pray uplift me who who is lost in this ocean of miserable existence which is but a shadow without any substance through thy teaching the master in a voice full of authority asked have you fully enjoyed the royal pleasures or have you any more desires left unfulfilled consider well and say the prince submitted by your grace all my longings have been fulfilled but i wish that your holiness should see the legal splendor you have blessed me with the master replied o prince how can i ever step in your realm where holy cows are slaughtered if i do so the people of the four castes native hindus will blame me and you will you so will your fellow muslim blame you for according me such a royal welcome the latter pleaded i am not a prince in fact i am but a washerman and your humble servant when you were lord shri pada i shall prohibit the slaughter of cows in my principality pray grace it with your visit the lord yielded saying it is not in my nature to turn down or ignore the wishes of my devout ones i will go with you the prince was overwhelmed with joy and bore the master's paduka sandals on his head he seated shri guru and his disciples in royal palanquins and followed them on foot the master noticed it and said son we have a long way to go it does not behove a prince to proceed in this fashion the prince protested pray do not address me as such for i am no prince i am but your slave and a washerman i shall at once transfer my royal authority to another and shall devote my life to implicit obedience of thy dictates the lord said son rulership is always a manifestation of the divine guardians of the cardinal directions being blessed with such it does not behove you to treat yourself that way you may you may deem it as my command and come along on horseback the prince obeyed as they proceeded the master again said we we that are adherent of religious laws and renunciate should not travel with a priestly princely personage like you are or of an alien faith lest it cause confusion and misapprehensions in the minds of the people so i shall go ahead and you come after and join me join me there so seeing the master reached the holy place of papanas tirtha 44 course away miraculously in just half a minute the disciples who were there were pleasantly surprised to find him in his devotion naganada then took his mo- took him home and offered him worship and bhiksha after lunch the master said that a muslim prince was coming to meet him at the holy spot and went there again after a little while the muslim ruler arrived at papanasa tirtha and seating sri guru in the royal palanquin and taking all the disciples with him proceeded to the city of vaiduria the holy city was well beautified with floral arches sri guru was taken in a royal procession with song dance music and a rich pageant cries of glory to sri guru went up in the hair then the pre- master was led walking on a silken carpet spread all along the way and was finally seated on the royal throne music and dance were ordered in honor of the august visitor thus the prince showed the master to all his people the bigoted ones among the muslim population were displeased at the honor accorded to a hindu saint but the devout ones praised him then sri guru said to the prince now that i have seen your people and you satisfied 
are you satisfied not completely noble sir according accord me the blessed opportunities of serving you and uplift me spiritually to i surrender all that is mine to your holiness said the ruler son right worthily have you acted and i am pleased with your gesture i shall grant your wish said sri guru and crowned the ruler's eldest son as king and successor then he said to the former ruler son renounce all desires and proceed to sri salem i shall give the necessary instructions to my disciples at gangapur and then proceed thither there you will again be blessed with my darshan then he bathed in the river godavari and went to the confluence of bhima and amar raja the devotees there were delighted to see see him and threw a dinner for all to celebrate the occasion then the guru said to them our fame has spread everywhere even even those who are devoid of uh, true de- devotion will flock to this place out of selfishness and greed and i shall leave this place and proceed to sri salem when the master got ready for departure the natives of the village rushed to him and begged him not to deprive them of his divine presence but to stay on the lord said do not feel sad that way how can i bear to be away from my devotees i only seem to leave for sri salem only to the grosser vision of the phys- physical but i will ever abide here in my real state as the spirit and the real self i will seek my noon bhiksha in this village and accept your loving devotional service in this month by living my living presence will be experienced by anyone who bathes in the sangama worships the holy people tree and takes darshan of my padukas here then the natives of gandharva pura and the disciples accompanied sri guru and his and his four companion disciples up to the limits of the village and accorded them a moving send off when they all returned to the mat they verily found the master seated in it then they realized that whatever he said was literally true some of the disciples stayed back at the village renounced it disciples krishna saraswati bala saraswati upendra saraswati were already away on their on their way and wandering to holy places samad sayam deva the two disciple poets and i accompanied the master to sri salem when we all reached the patala ganga as per the master's wish we prepared a beautiful float with the leaves of banana and flowers and singing the glories of the lord we placed it on the waters of the river sri guru stepped in and sat on it only then could we divine divine could we divine his intent that it was our final parting and we shed tears the lord smiled and consoled us saying i am always with you you need not grieve as a token of that when i reach my real abode or state four flowers will come to you floating in the river that will be my ultimate prasad to you That was a Friday in the dark half of the month of Magha in the year of Bahudanya. The Lord seated on that floral float drifted along the flowing river. Soon after, as per the Master's promise, four flowers came to us drifting on the river against the current and two, we four of us picked them up. So saying, Siddha showed the holy flowers which we lovingly treasured as the Guru's final gift to Namadharaka and said, the Master can be seen can be seen even today by the virtuous and the devout only the unrighteous cannot experience his living presence taking his daily dip at the holy sangama he ever abides there in fact he has been blessing devotees with his divine acts leelas on countless occasions whoever can fully plumb the profundity of his divine power the aspirations of those who worship him there with true love will be fulfilled Indeed the Lord is ever present with those who incessantly adore him the miraculous experience of such will ever remain hidden in their own hearts hence worship him with the simplicity of your heart's love and remember he is the grantor of prayers Namadharaka was immersed in the aesthetic joy of having listened to the stories of the Lord play and bowed to Siddha in profound gratitude thus ends Sri Vasudevananda Saraswati Samhita Yana Guru Dwish Dwish Sahashri, being a Sanskrit paraphrase of the original Marathi work, Sri Guru Charitra of Gangadhar Saraswati, made by him at the specific command of Lord Dattatreya, Om Sri Dattatreya Namaha.
ದಿಗಂಬರ ದಿಗಂಬರ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದ ವಲ್ಲಭ ದಿಗಂಬರ ದಿಗಂಬರ ದಿವಂಬರ ಅವಧೂತ ಚಿಂತನ ದಿಗಂಬರ ಗುರುಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರು ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ವಾಸುದೇವಾನಂದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸುದೇವಾನಂದ ಸತ್ತಾಂಬೆ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಅಪೆಂಡಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಚರಿತ ಮೆನಿ ಆರ್ ದ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಬೈ ಡೈಲಿ ಡಿವೋಟ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆರ್ನ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ದತ್ತಾತ್ರೇಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ನರಿಂಗ್ ಗೈಡೆನ್ಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದೇರ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದೇರ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಓ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಪೋರ್ ಬಟ್ ಡಿವೋಟ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಿನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಂಗಾವ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಚರಿತ್ರ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಬಾಯ್ವುಡ್ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ದತ್ತಾ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ರೀಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಗೋ ಟು ನರಸಿಂಹವಾಡಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಮನಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅ ಕಂ ಕಂಪ್ನಿ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅ ರಿಚ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಹೂ ಆಡ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಸ್ಟ್ರಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಗೈಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಟರ್ನ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೇಡ್ ಎಮ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಟು ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಮೀನ್ ವೈಲ್ ಇಸ್ ನೇಬರ್ ಡಿ ವೋಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ದತ್ತಾ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಟು ಕಂಪನಿ ಏಮ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಟ್ರಿಪ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವೇ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಸಜೋಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಅ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಬೋರೆಗಾಂವ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ದತ್ತಾ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎಸ್ ಡ್ರೀಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಅಟ್ ನಾರ ನಾರಸೋಬಾವಡಿ ಟೇಕ್ ದರ್ಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ ರೀಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ವೈಲ್ ದೇ ವೆರ್ ಎನ್ಕ್ವೈರಿಂಗ್ ವೇರ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಲಿವ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೈಂಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಡೆಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ಡ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಫೆಮಿಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ನೇಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನ್ಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಫೇರ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ವಾಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಚರಿತ್ರ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ಮಲಿ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಝೀಲ್ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೆಟ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ವೈ ನಾಟ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಆ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ಜಪ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗಾಯತ್ರಿ ಮಂತ್ರ ದ ರಿಸಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇದ and tending the sacred fire he did not agree the same night lord datta appeared in his dream and initiated him with a mantra the next morning shri govinda swami saw him and said hello you are initiated with a mantra now learn the method of its japa and taught him the same shastri accepted shri govinda swami as his sadguru and under his care grew up to be a sadguru himself a sanyasi entitled shri vasudevananda saraswati then jagat guru sankracharya of shringeri h h shri chandrashekara bharati swami hailed him as the very manifestation of lord datta this is vasudevananda saraswati o oh, one young panduranga took darshan of shri vasudevananda saraswati at narasa bavadi and hence forth considered him as his guru unfortunately for him the saint attained mahasamadhi shortly after young panduranga prayed to datta for guidance when he heard a voice read that sacred book try read that secret book thrice on his way home he visited his uncle the latter used to revere his te- revere his text of shri guru charita which he devotedly read every day as he grew too old to do so now he was anxious as to whom he could entrust it it suddenly struck panduranga that it was a sacred book which datta directed him to read and he gladly received it he was pleasantly surprised to know that the book was personally given to his uncle by shri sai baba of shirdi an avatar of lord datta by diligent and devoted study of it he blossomed into shri sadguru Rangava Duta Ra- Maharaj of Nareswar. Thank you.